Hey guys, it's MED2, and we are back with another flyout video. But today it's a little bit different. Today, along with several of the most talented builders in the game, we are building an aircraft that is recommended by you, the community. In order to do this, we've assembled 10 random members from the flyout community, as well as 5 of the best builders in the game to build us aircraft off of nothing but the suggestions of the community. There is a twist, however. All the members and staff participating in this event are not allowed to communicate. The members will give me a randomized piece of technical information about the aircraft, and the staff will have to build it. Nobody except for me will truly know what this aircraft could look like. Maybe we'll get fighter jet wings on an airliner body. This is really open to anything. Some of your ideas were truly cursed, but in the end, I think it all worked out into an aircraft I can only refer to as a beautiful monstrosity. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Naturally, the first thing we would be needing to know is the dimensions of this aircraft. My friend Lena opted to take this question as our first participating member. She had told us that this aircraft needed to be about 18 meters long, 5 meters tall, and 11 wide. These dimensions didn't need to be perfect, as long as it's generally close to this. Non-precise measuring was exactly what we needed as we had so many different people working on dimensionally impactful parts of this aircraft. According to our second member, known as a random internet user, this aircraft will also feature three engines. An unusual number to be certain, but we could make it work. Regarding the fuselage, there were still multiple questions that needed to be asked in terms of cockpit shaping, intake placement, and some other small factors. It is also worth noting that these engines would be mounted in the fuselage, which leads us to more complications when it comes to the fuselage's design. Our next member, John B., was responsible for the general shape of the cockpit. He wanted a cockpit similar to that of a fighter jet, but one where the canopy is recessed below the top of the fuselage, similar to what you may see in an F-35 or Mirage 2000. Speaking of cockpits in an aircraft, our next member in this challenge, Archguide666, wanted the aircraft to be a two-seater with only enough seats for the pilots. In some ways I am very glad for the designers, but in others I am kind of disappointed, cause could you imagine if this thing were to have like eight seats? You could have a little business class cabin inside it or something. It would be a fun little private jet, but I digress. The engine prompt was nothing short of curse where another friend of mine, who goes by the name of Vlad, decided that this aircraft should have a high bypass fan on the front, similar to what you may see in an airliner, but be backed up by a whole turbo ramjet system. Oh boy, whoever was designing the engines would be in for a treat. Vlad also decided that these engines would have a maximum diameter of 1 meter. We're now looking at 1 meter wide high bypass turbo fan ramjet? Well, one thing was for sure, this thing would guzzle fuel like there was no tomorrow. At this point, I'm also guessing it'll probably be very fast thanks to the inclusion of ramjets. It's like we were slapping an airliner engine and SR-71 engine into one unholy concoction. But hey, we were almost done with our questions. It's just a few more now. The rest of the questions from this point on will be about finishing up the airframe. The time has come to move on to the most important part of an aircraft, the wings. First, according to the user Halo, the wings would be compound delta wings with a 55 degree slope on the leading edge. This is a pretty steep slope, but it will hopefully be improved further down the wings, as it is a compound delta, so therefore the sweep angle will decrease further down the wing. Halo wasn't done yet, however. The wings would also resemble gull wings on the y-axis. This plane really was going to be very interesting looking, wouldn't it? Anyways, next up was the tail which luckily was pretty easy, as the user I will be referring to as Project had provided us for a nice sketch with isometric front and top views for what the tail should look like on the aircraft. This was most certainly interesting, as now we knew this compound delta-winged, gull-winged aircraft would feature this giant T-tail. It would be very fun looking, that's for sure. Anyways, next was the intakes. For these intakes, the user SNK specified that we should have ramp intakes, similar to the ones he provided in this drawing. Luckily, these two drawings have been very helpful for explaining things, and I'm sure the people designing them will be very appreciative of this. 
For the last question, we need to know a little bit about the land of gear. According to this Russian user, which I will call Pyotrriva, I don't know if that is a correct pronunciation or not, so please hold off. We would be making this a tail dragger. Of course, the aircraft would be a tail dragger. Just as an icing on the cake for how weird this thing was gonna be. And, of course, we can't forget the name. So, one of our users, which I'll refer to as Cooper, had decided to ask ChatGPT for the name, because of course. The AI came up with the Pickle Jet, so uh, I guess that's gonna be the name of this thing. So now all I had to do was send these parts over to the builders and give it about a week. And that's exactly what I did. Alright folks, all the parts from the designers have come back now. Since there was no communication between the designers, and everyone was essentially working blind, I didn't believe any of these parts would quite fit together. So I'd be stitching everything together as well as quickly doing the land gear and paint scheme for the aircraft. But first off people, let's just take a moment to admire this fuselage. Edensk, the builder, put a lot of work into this and it shows. It follows all of the aspects we had mentioned earlier. The cockpit, the passengers, the engines, and the intake style. There was a lot of work that was put into this fuselage, so I just wanted to very quickly thank him for all of the work he did for this aircraft. Unfortunately for the designers, I did a pretty poor job balancing the workload for them. Some designers, such as Irans, got a lot of work, and other ones didn't really get to do anything. Maybe if we do this again, it'll be a little bit better. Next would be the engines, which were designed by who is commonly referred to as the best engine designer in the game, Jagjag. He used these Sovereign Citadel turbine engines to make our horrific dreams of high bypass turbo ramjets come true. While the fan was very low pressure and very small in diameter, it still fit the classifications for the engine we needed. I was told these engines would put out a lot of thrust on the afterburner, so that would be exciting. Our next part, the wings, were designed by Mr. Chips. He followed my advice the best he could, making these excellent compound delta wings with the gull wing shape we wanted initially, and also referring to this aircraft as Jungle Juice, which honestly, I would have named the aircraft this had it not already been known as the Pickle Jet of all things. Next was the tail assembly, and oh man, this thing was huge. Designed by the Wanderer 05, I couldn't ask for a better replica of the tail offered. I believe the only dimension he got for the tail is that it could be about 2.5 meters tall, and otherwise he simply had to make the tail proportional. I chose 2.5 meters based on some basic math about what I thought the rest of the aircraft would look like, trying to keep it as close as possible to the dimensions previously given to us by Lena. Unfortunately, the tail offered had a really cool design pattern on it, which I should show on the screen now, that could not get transferred through the subassembly. While this design wasn't present here, I would be trying to pay homage to this design in the rest of the aircraft's livery later on. But for now, we were designing the landing gear. Obviously, this would be a simple tail dragger style aircraft, but this was awfully unusual considering the nature of the aircraft. Luckily, in the fuselage, there is plenty of space for the rear landing gear just below the middle engine, so we wouldn't need to clear any extra space. I am glad to see how many of the parts on this aircraft seem to fit together pretty well. Before getting all this landing gear stuff out of the way, I had to complete some control surface modification on the aircraft. This was because some of it wasn't fully set up yet, and it would be the only way to ensure that we'd actually fly once we eventually loaded it in. I also added leading edge slats to it that performed under AOA to increase our high AOA performance as this was just one giant delta wing. I guess in a way you could also call this thing a biplane, in some really weird, messed up sense. And with this very quick time lapse out of the way, we should be done with the landing gear, and ready to go on to painting the aircraft. Now that we have the control surfaces and landing gear out of the way, we are free to go on to painting. For the paint design, like I said, I would like to make it at least similar to the design we saw on the tail earlier. However, due to this aircraft being predominantly white or grayish white, I would try and be making a more neutral colored livery with mostly light gray and dark gray as the coloring. During the recording of this, we had still been waiting on one part, 
so we didn't quite have the cockpit in place yet. The reason the cockpit took so long is because the creator of the cockpit, Hot Dog, needed to receive the fuselage in order to know how to shape the cockpit. This is the only part where I allowed the builder to actually see what the other person was doing. But of course, since there were no technical specifications about the cockpit, I was completely fine doing this. And the results of the cockpit later on, as you can see, makes it 100% worth it in my mind. But anyways, back to the paint design. For this design, we'll be mostly using the space triangles that we saw earlier on the livery for the tail. I really liked this aesthetic and I thought it would make a great livery for the rest of the aircraft too, but of course I had to start with the tail. After including a few more finishing touches such as intake cautions and lights, we were ready to put the cockpit in. As mentioned earlier, the cockpit was made by the user, Hot Dog, and it is an absolutely incredible cockpit but you'll just have to wait for the montage to see it. Speaking of which, with the final touch-ups we did on this aircraft, we were ready for our final product. And here it was, the finished product. This thing was fast, it could go Mach 3. I think I even got up to about 3.2 or 3.3 in these tests. Another thing about this aircraft, it had a pretty solid range as well. I think I got it out past about 3000 kilometers, which is pretty good at Mach 3 of all things. As shown briefly in the montage, the cockpit of this thing really was incredible. That and the fuselage were easily my favorite parts of this aircraft. They all fused together so well and honestly made this aircraft in its own weird monstrosity way kind of beautiful. Either way, I hope everyone really enjoyed this video. Hope to see you in the next one, and goodbye.